With gold consistently breaking record highs, why is silver still firmly planted here on Tierra Firma on Earth when it should be on the moon? Why is it lagging so far behind gold? What's wrong with it? We're going to try to answer that question and more on this video as we explore. If you've been stacking for any length of time, more than likely, like me, you're frustrated. And I'm not going to have all the answers, but I did find a piece of analysis here that it might give a little bit of insight as to why silver is not $50 an ounce yet. And that is kind of the price. That is the placeholder price because silver's been there. Well, for all intents and purposes, twice in recent history, first in 1980, than in 2011. And right now we are seeing a very, very strong movement in gold's price. But here in 2024, with gold multiple times breaking records and reaching an all-time high in nominal dollars, well, we still have a long ways to go yet for this metal, for silver. It is lagging, no question about that. And it doesn't look like it's going to uh, get there anytime soon. In fact, as I record this video, it is now back again under $30 an ounce. And even if by the time you see this video, it gets to $30 an ounce, that's still a long ways away from uh, getting anywhere near its record high. Now, silver has done very well this year so far in and of itself, but the gold to silver ratio is still sitting at over 85 to one as I record this video. But what's going on here? The price of silver keeps lagging while gold is setting a series of new all-time highs. Silver is still about 40% below its all-time high, according to investinghaven.com. And what's wrong with it? Well, the short answer is nothing. That's really the bottom line here. There's nothing wrong with silver. Especially if we look at recent history, would you know, if we take a look at history and what has happened there, uh, it may not uh, exactly follow history. It may not necessarily even repeat, but oftentimes it does rhyme. And so patience is the key here, essentially. Silver is lagging because it tends to outperform during, not at the beginning of a gold bull market. Of course, not my answer to that is, is, well, we've been in a gold bull market for quite a long time here, and we're still not seeing much results with silver. Uh, and we would think by now we would see a little bit more activity there. The silver price must be playing mental games, essentially, with, with the bulls and bears alike. Uh, but that's how it should be. Silver is kind of a restless metal. We know it's very volatile. It moves much more radically in both directions than does gold. Although it is a little different market with gold because gold has been on a consistent rally and a lot of that is due to central banks buying gold. That is essentially what is propping up gold's price. Of course, you know what I say, be your own central bank and that does account for gold. And even though banks don't hold silver, central banks don't, I think it's a good idea to have a little bit of silver in your stack as well. Uh, so we know that if we look at some charts that the gold bull market does continue after a hiccup in the previous decade, followed by consolidation in 2022 and 2023, gold is now set to continue moving higher. And so most people are bullish on gold. It'll retrace at a certain point, but to the extent that will violate its uptrend uh, and not to the extent that it will violate its uptrend. And uh, silver does tend to lag gold. If you look back through the course of time, uh, during we see a couple of spikes lower in 2004, 2005, and 2008, 2011, and then in 2020, we've seen it happen repeatedly. And this piece here does show a couple of charts, and actually too many to show here. I'm going to post a link to the article where you can see some of this. Um, so they believe that the storm will come, and right now we're in the calm part of that storm. And they believe that silver is going to hit $50 an ounce. So there's some findings that we can look when we look at the data that silver's consolidating above its secular breakout level of $28.80 an ounce. 
Silver did not structurally breach this secular breakout point. Silver is consolidating above its uh, highest retracement levels from the Fibonacci curve. There is a falling trend line since the 2024 highs were set in about May and June, which will act as resistance until the consolidation is strong enough for a breakout. And that's what we've all been kind of looking for. We've talked about it. We also talked about the summer doldrums, and I've warned this community that, uh, you know, to be prepared for that even in an election year. And to some extent, uh, these little pullbacks is kind of a continuation of that. But we must expect volatility in silver until it can really firm up. You know, they're talking about 2880 here based off of technical analysis and retracement and the like. But what about where it's going to go from here when you draw these lines out? And it's fascinating how they do this. There's a lot of math and predictions and patterns you can analyze. And some of that does give some insight, uh, although I really feel that I don't want to get too much in the weeds with regards to technical, technical analysis because that can all be blown out of the water on any given day based off of psychology and market trends. Psychology rules a day in the markets, and this is why you see such volatility really in, in every market. And gold is not even exempt from that, although it does move much less. In fact, right now, silver's up, as I record this video, uh, much more so than gold. And that tends, tends to be what happens uh, whenever there's a move to the upside as well as to the downside. It's just that lately, and through the past several years, and maybe even decade, we have seen silver get pummeled harder than gold, more consistently, widening that ratio more and more. Uh, so it's unusual to see some kind of critical timelines and insights uh, during this time because these types of insights that they're talking about here are, are that they have a much more in-depth analysis. But there's nothing wrong with the silver price chart, they're saying, certainly not considering that a decision point is still ahead of us. Of course, we know what that decision point is going to be. Uh, it's going to be what the Fed does, the strength of the dollar, geopolitical events, decisions being made economically, politically in this country now as we are in an election year. All of those things are going to weigh uh, on uh, the, all of the markets and silver will uh, suffer or benefit in the wake of all of that. So nothing is really wrong with silver. It's expected behavior for silver to lag gold. And most of us understand that, by the way. But... It seems like it should be happening by now, but it hasn't. Until silver outperforms gold, which typically happens in a developed stage in a gold market. In other words, far into the gold market, we see it move up. And again, you make your assessment based off of what this piece is saying. I'm going to post a link to it in the description below. And so they're saying that the chart looks good for silver. A decision point is still ahead of us. In a way, we could have been awkward if silver was already hitting $50 an ounce now. In other words, it would be unnatural, they're saying. I don't know that I would go that far. I, I think in a way that it should be $50 by now. But as is the case of any market and any analysis, you can pick it apart for whatever reasons you so uh, choose. But the reality is silver's price is what it is today. And the reality is that silver has increased in price fairly dramatically this year. 2024 has been a great year for silver when it's all said and done. It's just that gold is outshining it by a wide margin. But if you look at silver in and of itself, and if you're a pure silver stacker or you're mainly a silver stacker and you purchased silver and a fair amount of it at the beginning of the year before March, compared to now, you're sitting pretty. By any stretch of any imagination, whether or not you buy ETFs or physical silver uh, in various different forms. And that, I think, is reason to celebrate uh, silver and to understand that the gold to silver ratio um, very well may be developing a new normal. What that number will be is, I don't know. But let me tell you this, even if silver hits 50 to 1 or hits $50 an ounce compared to where gold is now, Likely gold will be higher than where it is now if that occurs, which means that the gold silver will, ratio will still be high, maybe even above the normal, which averaged out over the last 
couple of decades would be anywhere between uh, 50 to 65 to 1. And we may not even get there. And remember, back when silver rose in 2011 uh, and gold rose to, uh, silver rose at $50 an ounce then, uh, gold rose to $1,923 an ounce or $1,921 an ounce, the gold to silver ratio was 32 to 1. And I think it was like 16 to 1 way back in 1980 when silver almost reached $50 an ounce. So keep that in mind. Those were anomalies, but we're longing for that $50 silver. But we're so far away from it. We're still 20 bucks away from that plus. And uh, we're opining just to stay above 30 at this point. We'll see how that plays out. But nonetheless, patience is the key. And that's what, that's what the lesson of this article is saying and why it's lagging. Uh, but keep in mind, you look at where things are and uh, what tends to happen, why silver tends to lag gold in a bull market. And silver is, in a sense, in an extended bull market from March until now. It really is in a bull market, especially compared to what silver has done in the last decade and even leading up to where it is now. Uh, so fascinating indeed. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I hope this video will encourage silver stackers out there. Uh, because really, in the end, it's about holding for the long term. That's the best way to be able to realize um, your position of maintaining your wealth. Not about profits, not about gains. When you stack silver, you stack it to keep your wealth outside of the system that many of us feel is corrupt. And it's also about uh, wealth preservation. Yes, indeed. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. And I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.